Well, yes. In fact, Teddy's is the third new piano concerto commissioned for Yuja in the last five years alone. First, there was John Adams' Must the Devil Have All the Good Tunes in 2019. Then, more recently, in 2022, Magnus Lindbergh's third piano concerto. Itself a kind of musical child, not of Rachmaninoff and Gershwin like the Abrams, but Rachmaninoff and Bartok. Damn, Rachmaninoff really gets around. The composer have this thing, they love to write lots of notes for me for some reason. Yeah, I wonder why that is. Your ability to listen and digest, your brain works like a supercomputer. It also helps when, like Lindbergh and Abrams both, the composer knows their way around the piano. I love that because like Rahman and Prokofiev, when their pianists themselves, they just, they make it sound harder <laughs> than it actually is. Pianistic or not, they're still pretty hard. Would you say that Abrams is pianistic? He's pianistic. He's very pianistic. <laughs> That's good. Here's the thing. I, I cannot play this. <laughs> Things were a little easier for Mozart, who lived in a time when composers were more economical with their notes. And Mozart wrote piano concertos to perform himself. And to begin to understand what makes the Abrams concerto tick, it helps to pay a quick visit to Mozart's Vienna in the 1780s. You know, we look at Mozart as clearly our father of the piano concerto. I mean, he wrote so many of them. 27, to be exact. And almost all of them begin with an extended orchestral tutti before the piano even enters. And this goes on and on, and the pianist sits there. 250 years later, and the Abrams Concerto begins with its own kind of orchestral tutti, although more of an overture than a proper concerto exposition, but nevertheless, still a nod to the roots of the genre. But you sort of, in a way, like go back to the classical period, right? Uh, this is actually in a really strict, pretty traditional form. Where Teddy is definitely not conventional is in his choice of musical material in the opening. The syncopated thing, which is... classic Delta Blues offbeat material that you'll hear in John Lee Hooker that was then reinterpreted by a lot of 60s and 70s bands that were obsessed with like the early blues artists. Bands like the Rolling Stones, as heard in their cover of blues artist Slim Harpo's Shake Your Hips. Or perhaps even more iconic, ZZ Top's LaGrange. 